I think it, it's, it's completely dependent on, you know, what the business requirements and objectives are. So if the old course is um, still meeting those objectives and those requirements, then I think uh, we don't really need to go for modernization as such. Uh, if it is instructionally sound, uh, then we can leave it as it is, even if it is built using an old tool, but your LMS can still hold it, uh, it is good to go. However, when there are instances like the content is redundant or there are inconsistencies in content or the business goal itself has changed uh, too much of content because the entire requirement of converting your instructor-led training to e-learning or to micro-learning, we do away with a lot of content. Sometimes as much as 60% uh, and retain just 40% and then we decide to do uh, what is appropriate with that uh, uh, 40%. So the instances where we should or shouldn't go would depend on um, are the old courses accessible? As Vikas just pointed out, uh, the importance of accessibility. Uh, we need to be able to cater to all kinds of learners. So if the old courses did not have that, then definitely we need to go ahead with uh, modernization. The design changes uh, themselves, we need to put the learner in the center of the design. What is it that they should be able to do uh, this is where stakeholders, conversations with stakeholders, the training needs analysis that comes into the picture, uh, the role of the SME, all of it is, is crucial here to be able to put together that design and prototyping, again, is a very important part, I feel, which uh, needs to be in place as, well, as far as this entire ecosystem is concerned. We did talk about the importance of templates and scripts because there may be instances where you just have a few months to roll the entire thing out and the timelines are strict. Having said that, certain processes should be in place uh, where uh, you are not strictly confining your design to uh, templates. There is also scope for uh, scenarios and consequence-based uh, learning. Uh, Every time there is uh, an instance where a long course needs to be chunked into shorter modules and micro learning, because micro learning is a huge takeaway from all the surveys that we've looked at uh, today. So when there is a need for people to be able to access that content just in time, then definitely that's uh, an instance where we should go ahead uh, with uh, modernization and definitely with ILTs and given the way uh, things are at uh, the moment. Uh, we do have virtual ILTs and I'm, I'm sure that's not going to go away anytime soon. Uh, still, we, we do have on the job learning, which is very important, which we see in our projects, which we do internally. New hire onboarding, I've had the opportunity to speak with recent hires when they get onboarded and the kind of training that they undergo at the end of which the business wants them to be billable and they want them to be productive as soon as possible. So I reached out to the recent hires to understand how effective the training has been for them. And it was very interesting where they still felt that even though some parts are digitized, there is still a need for them to be paired with mentors and to be paired with uh, their seniors to get that hands-on uh, experience. So wherever there is an opportunity for blended learning, I think uh, modernization is, is something that uh, we need to look out for.